Howdy YouTube, Jay Bird here. Today we're gonna to be talking about building a backhoe dolly for my Yanmar SA424. With winter quickly approaching, I need a way to be able to not only get this off the tractor, but to be able to move it around inside of my garage. I don't have a lot of space here and I can't leave it sitting in the floor. So stay tuned, let's get this done. So the materials on this are actually pretty easy. We'll start with a two by 10 by 10 foot. From that, I did have to buy treated in the four by six. I bought an eight footer. So I went to Harbor Freight and I bought these wheels based on two things. Number one, they're tall. These are the six inch um, heavy duty uh, swivel caster. I got two that are swivel and I got two that are not swivel. As far as the hardware and attaching everything, to attach the wheels to the 4x6, I'm using galvanized 3 8 um, with a washer, 3 8 washer on every single one. I got 16 of those. And I got eight 6-inch uh, long 3 8 carriage bolts. The first and probably the most important measurement to get started with is how much distance from the ground to the back or lowest part of your backhoe do you have because this is the distance you're going to need to build to in order to give something for the backhoe to sit on and rock back forth because again you're not going to be using your stabilizer legs here so and if i measure that it's right around 13 and a half inches so if you think about the 13 and a half inches almost that i've got to make up for the um the wheels account for seven and a half inches from the bottom of the wheel to the uh the plate that it mounts to, the swivel plate. So there's seven and a half. Uh, my four by six, I'm using the four side. So there's three and a half. Obviously that brings me to 11. And then I've got a two by 10. Obviously I'm gonna use the inch and a half side of that. So that brings me to 12 and a half. So I'm about an inch shy uh, from the almost 13 and a half, maybe about, a, maybe about three quarters of an inch shy, somewhere between uh, an inch and a half of an inch is a good safe place to be. I'm right in the middle at three quarters. Another important measurement you're gonna to wanna to do is get a uh, width across the back side, uh, the, the, the backhoe here where your stabilizer legs from, from each leg. So I'm gonna take a measurement from the pivot pin of one to the pivot pin of another and it's just shy of 36 inches. Went ahead and cut it at four feet. That'll give me some extra stability. This last measurement is a little bit tricky to get, but I, I promise you, you cannot skip this step. Um, so this last one is the span, all right? And it's basically how long your dolly is gonna be. So it's really just getting the span um, between these two worked out. And there's really only one way to do that, and it's trial and error. You essentially have to um, get your tractor running, put your blocks out, and you're gonna need to build up a support for your bucket, about the height that it would normally be on your dolly. Uh, I'm fudging with the numbers a little bit, but it's close enough. And find out how far out do you have to move um, your, your bucket before the motion down and the motion back up will rock your backhoe out of its pivot pins. So now that I have this laid out how I want it, I'm actually gonna use some good old fashioned nails to hold this in place just like All right, so we got the carriage bolts in, all eight of them, all the way around, and tightened down. Used a uh, 9 16 wrench to get those nuts tightened up, and now it's gonna be time to put the uh, 3 8 inch by two and a half inch galvanized lags, 16 of them, uh, four for each wheel, and let's get those wheels attached. Down, three to go. We'll 
folks, the wheels are on, and I gotta tell you, it's better than I imagined. The six inch rubber slash polyurethane, whatever, heavy duty, 600 pound rated wheels at Harbor Freight are amazing. What I'm gonna do is clean up these edges with the skill saw real quick, just to knock over, knock off the excess board, and, um, and then we're gonna give this thing a test run. So let's get that nice and straight. Looks good. And then for the front, I'm just going to kind of eyeball, is it uh, about center with my bucket? Um, eyeballing it should be good enough. And I'm making sure that the tri it's not too far back. Looks good on that side. Looks good on this side. So let's crank this tractor up and see what happens. Disconnected, and I wanted to show you how smooth these wheels are. So I'm going to grab this 800 pound backhoe with one hand, roll it on out of the way. All in all, uh, I'm super happy with this build. Uh, this turned out better than um, even I expected. I think the wheels, the Harbor Freight 600 pound, six inch rubber slash it's like a rubber outer with a polyurethane core um greasable ball bearing wheels that's the other thing about those wheels i paid a little bit more for them harbor freight i think the uh the casters that pivot um are normally around uh i want to say they're normally around 18 dollars um the ones that don't pivot are normally like 16 dollars or something like that um but well worth it in my opinion if you want something that's going to be um sturdy Six, I mean, high load rating, greasable ball bearings. They, I mean, I know the, the video doesn't do it justice. These things move like butter. Um, it's effortless to move an 800 pound backhoe around my garage now. So again, thanks to DIY My Way um, for the video that got me started on this. Um, please go check uh, his video out and give him a thumbs up and subscribe to his channel. He's got all kinds of good stuff. And um, yeah, I'll come back with some more uh, good stuff here in the, in the coming, uh, coming weeks and months ahead.